Are you ready? Go! All right, yo, welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ, and we are back for another episode of In the Hunt. This time, we find ourselves in Okigawa, Saitama. So let's go ahead and take a look at the display cases, the junk section, video games, of course, more games, and even more games. They had plenty of games here, and we're going to um, check all that stuff out. But please like, share, comment, and subscribe, as that really helps out the channel. But display cases, here we go. Now, this one was inconveniently located along the stairwell but it was full of a lot of cool stuff and we're gonna get a closer look here and as you can see this stuff is um, classic Sega goodness for the SC 3000 sorry and the SG 1000 we have Sega Galaga there for about 40 bucks and then we have this pachinko game for about fifteen hundred and thirty dollars you know that's super expensive and then we have Congo Bongo here for a respectable $25. And then just below that, we have a Sony MSX computer for $120. And next to that, uh, Famicom, uh, or Famicom, a Sega Mark III, which is uh, the master system, I believe, in the States for $140. And beneath that, a Sega Genesis. But in the back, we have one that's in almost pristine condition. I mean, look how, look how even the brilliance of the styrofoam is white and that's going for about a hundred bucks. Definitely cool to see that one as well as this Famicom for $300. And it's also clean. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, what year this was produced that specific unit, but it's clean. And then uh, NEC PCFX. Look at this bad boy and $250. We have the controller there with a little bit of stains, but man, it was really awesome to to actually see one of these up up close and in person and uh, the the Gaia in Shinjuku has plenty of games for this console this PC console but yeah definitely rad anyhow this is the PlayStation focused um, display case they had all sorts of goodies from like the VR there the headphones the Bluetooth headphones and even a PlayStation 2 as you see but next to that we have the Xbox one X which is a freaking awesome system I recently picked one up and these seem to be going up in value but there you go 250 bucks and then above that we have a few um, PlayStation 4 consoles and a handful of games with that Death Stranding kind of being one that I definitely would like to try but here is the Nintendo focused or themed uh, display case all sorts of goodies inside and as you can see we have the Hori uh, mini pad for the GameCube for 45 bucks um, never actually tried that one but it seems like it would be a comfy controller and then in the back we have the Strange Journey uh, limited edition for the 3DS for 120 as well as this Biohazard the Dark Side uh, Chronicles for 50 which is kind of pricey and then of course we have our loose carts a Neo Geo mini in the back there and then all of these themed uh, Wiimotes which is nice to see all of those gathered um, up close and personal and then amiibos up at the top but that's it for the display cases let's take a look at the junk section and right away we have plenty of consoles we have accessories and just bins and tubs full of cables and odd uh, you know controllers all sorts of goodness and 300 yen for that black Wii I mean if you're if you're into the Wii definitely that is a, a steal of a deal and most of this stuff I'm it's untested you know but I picked up a, a Famicom from a junk section at a different hard off and I had extremely good luck it was clean none of this sun fading like you see the, in the ones here but usually a buying these is gonna be a safe bet and it has a little tag there which I believe says untested so you know buy at your own risk but definitely not hard to repair and you usually will find an awesome deal but here we have um, five bucks for the little steering wheel for the 3ds for the original 3ds and then next to that we have the the Saturn Bomberman multi-tap for the Sega Saturn for 30 bucks haven't actually seen the box for this usually I when I see this thing it's uh, it's loose but that was definitely cool to um, to see the original packaging then we have a few odds and ends here and below that we have the original PlayStation which is a freaking awesome console and sometimes you can get a really good deal on those at the hard off but anyhow we're gonna take a look at some some controllers uh, beginning with uh, a closer look at these uh, racing wheels or racing controller as you see there for the Sega Dreamcast and these were going roughly for about 15 bucks so not a bad price and as you can see the box is actually not really sun faded but it does have like some tape there and whatnot 
And I believe these are untested, but my gut is telling me that these things work and I kind of regret not picking one up. And then above that we have quite a bit of PS2 fats. And I think uh, usually Hard Off has a, has a testing station, so you know you can test out these 360s, the PS3s. And I've actually shown that in a video before. But um, yeah, you know, I wanna I wanna add a PS3 fat to my collection, but hopefully uh, not gonna happen anytime soon. But hopefully in the future. But up above, at the very top, we have the Hori Hayabusa uh, fight sticks. And let me tell you, they had tons and tons of Hori controllers here. And we'll take a look at a few. But before that, I just want to show this uh, Sega Saturn racing wheel. I actually ended up picking one up a, a few months back at a, at a hard off, and definitely worth it. But as you can see here, we have more Hori fight sticks. There's just a ton of fight sticks, and this is kind of a testament to the, I guess, the success that Hori has been seeing lately, especially with you know with the with the PS4 and especially the Switch. They're just selling a lot of controllers nowadays, and a lot of them are are in fairly awesome, uh, you know, quality. But then we have this bad boy. Look at this, the twin stick for the PlayStation. I've never actually seen this bad boy up close and personal, and the box was actually huge. And this thing was going for about 20 bucks. Um, I would definitely like to try that out, but that thing is just too big. I, I don't even have any, I don't think I even have any games that would uh, fit. But Game Aisle, let's take a look at the Game Aisle. And as you can see here, um, we have PlayStation 3 and then, you know, different prices because they have different units and whatnot. And then we have a Super Famicom, which is clean, no sun painting there, but 65 bucks. And below that, of course, some GameCubes, which include the Game Boy players. So that's kind of nice um, to see. And then next to that, we have the good old Wii U. Freaking awesome system, short-lived, but definitely cool. And then below that, we have a 360. Um, this is the, uh, the original design. And uh, this is a system that... I, I kind of do like the design, but it's not one that I really trust, you know, because of the red ring business. But 50 bucks, that's not too bad. And with the exchange rate, you know, it's actually a little bit lower than that if you're paying in dollars, which hard off actually accepts uh, US dollars. So you could pay in that and no problema. But you're going to be at the mercy at, of, of their exchange rates. But and I, I believe it's an OK rate. But look at this more fight sticks. Uh, I'm not sure if these are uh, hoary ones. They do sure that the one that white one does look like it, but this one does not. But a hundred bucks for that one. And then of course, we this this wouldn't be a proper game aisle without tubs full of loose cards and PlayStation games. Look at this toe ball number two for three bucks. Now I was really tempted to pick this one up, but unfortunately, it did not have the manual. And since I'm a sucker for all that stuff, I gotta have it complete. But this one, toe ball number one, was 100 yen and it was complete, even with the spine card, so I ended up picking this one up. And this is a pretty cool, funky fighting game by uh, Squaresoft there. And then I regret not picking this up, which is Enemy Zero. I do have a copy, but I'm actually wanting to get um, this version of the, this variant of the, of the cover, because it's a little bit cleaner. The, usually the one that has a little holographic cover is a little bit dirty. But we have Sonic Adventure, the 10th anniversary. Now this doesn't actually include the game. It only includes, uh, of course, the box and the 10th anniversary goodies. And kind of kind of surprised to see that one. And then we have Battle Arena Toshinden for $1. I actually ended up picking up this game as I had a fun time with it way, way back in the day. And then Dragon Ball Z. This is actually one of the weaker entries into the Dragon Ball Z video games. And I used to own it for the Sega Saturn, but you know, it, it was interesting for what it was, but nothing really great. And I'm not sure what this is, but this is going to segue us into the uh, Super Famicom games. And look at this, the Art of Fighting, 18 bucks. And I just want to show the backside because interestingly, no screenshots, but it does have artwork for all the central characters of the game. And then we have Dark Half by Enix for 15 bucks. Haven't seen this one before, but that artwork looks pretty rad. And from the screenshots, we can see that it seems to be like a, a strategy RPG, so probably definitely uh, heavy on the Japanese text. And then we have this miniature uh, Gundam GX. Um, don't know too much about these games, but they, they sell quite well in, in Japan. And, you know, judging from those screenshots, it looks like a pretty interesting uh, entry into the series. But we're just going to skim over these uh, Super Famicom games with the uh, Goemon 2 there for 18 bucks. That's kind of the standout one. And that's, uh, that's not a bad price for that game. 
But here we'll get a, a for Super Mario World, 10 bucks, and that kind of gives us a, more uh, of an idea of how they have things priced. $12 for Super Mario Kart, which seems to be like the new standard for those games. Uh, granted, if you look, you can probably find them for, for cheaper, but um, I guess not too bad on the pricing there. And then below that, we have Rockman 7, Mega Man 7 for 20 bucks. Now, I think this is missing the manual, but look at the look at the box. It's in such a freaking awesome condition. And definitely want to add this game to my uh, to my collection sometime in the future. And then we have Puyo Puyo 2 Remix puzzle game. Um, and then feel free to pause here if you want a closer look at some of these uh, other Super Famicom games. And then we have Sailor Moon R, 18 bucks, and this seems to be some kind of fighting game. Never played it, but definitely interesting. And that's where I'm going to end part one. In part two, we're going to continue looking down the game aisle. But as always, thank you for checking out Retro Rewire. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you all soon. Ciao.